Namaste, Tashi Delek, Sasrika, Shalom Aleikum, and Assalamu Alaikum. I'm your host, Mike Deasy, Mike Deasy, which you probably know by now, and welcome to another welcome to another edition of the message. I've been talking much about Hebrew and Aramaic themes, or talking on the cusp, talking on the theme of Hebrew and Aramaic themes, but I don't spend as much time dealing with the Vedic theme. So, today I will do that. I don't feel that the Vedas get the credit they are due. I, I definitely do not get, don't give the, the Vedas the credit that they're due. So, once again, the guy least likely that wants to do the job, but the strangely most possibly most qualified guy to do the job, that being me, is about to give y'all, or excuse me, I'm trying to stop saying that word, going to give my spiritual family something to reflect on that's a little bit different from the Hebrew side. I've already said that, but anyway, we're going to talk just straight all Hindu thoughts today. Anyway, so, first part is going to be understanding the Puranas or understanding the um, Vedic stories. On every Athan or Monday, while I initially fasted to honor Muhammad's fast, I now fast because I realized from the Vedic tradition that Muhammad grew up Hindu, as has been discussed in the Hindu link in a Christianity and Islam series. Then, excuse me, I realized that from the Vedic tradition that Muhammad grew up Hindu, then at then was the day I was honoring Muhammad and honoring Shiva. Since this is true, I decided to make Angel Shiva the first focus in it first focus of a theme and Muhammad the second focus of the day. As always, I did make sure to make Salat about this idea and ask Allah slash Vishnu if he was okay with the uh, with this and if if he was not then please let a brother know so I will fix my speech. Seeing as I've been doing this Shiva Muhammad fast for almost two years now and I've always gotten a load of knowledge on Ithan. I think Vishnu slash Allah is very at peace with this idea of minds. Excuse me. Yeah. Jacked up because I'm reading the script. Anyway. <laughs> the idea, in all reality, does come from Vishnu. I, though I say self, I know in truth, it comes from on high. Anyway, yes, so every Athan I fast to honor Shiva and Muhammad. During the Athan fast, I read from the Shiva Purana, and there are a few things that have always bothered me as I read. Recognizing that Shiva is Michael in Hebrew, the same Michael that um that most people think is taught when uh, we're reading the Greek slash Latin book called Revelation. We think that it's talking about Jesus. No. It's actually talking about Michael. Just about to throw that out there. Anyway. I have a hard time accepting that an angel would trick an angel being Shiva would trick a human into doing anything. I also have an issue with the concept of an angel doing favors for a rakasa or a demon. Unless the Hebrew side is just that skewed on the facts, which it possibly could be, I do not understand why an angel, why angels are helping out or even talking to demons as though they're friends. Because that is, that's how the flow of the language in the Shiva Purana goes, is as though, <coughs> excuse me, the the angels or defies or 
for lack of better wording, which the word that's often used in the Puranas is gods, which I don't choose to use. I choose to mentally change the word because it doesn't sound accurate. Because going from the Hebrew side, to be a god means that you have to be self-created and in being self-created you have subjects that obey you subjects that are spirits that obey you the human subject is separate from the spirit subjects the spirit subjects are the first ones to obey you the humans are second being that from the Vedic side you have many different gods but few of them majority of them are not self-created majority of them are created by Vishnu well then there's also this debate that Shiva was not created by Vishnu but I'll get into that later back to the subject then there's Vishnu whom I honor on Khamis or Khamis which is Thursday for the same reason as I honor Shiva on Ethan. Yes, the silent reason Yes, the silent reason Muhammad was fasting on these days from the Arab from the Islamic side was be, was out of respect for both Shiva and Vishnu. No, none of the Islamic texts are gonna say this, mostly because the Islamic text is trying hard to not talk about the super big elephant in the room called we're just um, Hindus, but we're not really going to talk about what we really do. We're just going to come, come again, like, like we said a few days ago. We're going to uh, take the label off the door that says Hindu, just slap on the word Islam and call it. Yeah, we're doing that. Anyway, um, let's see, what was I saying? With Vishnu, my first issue is his manifestation as Krishna. As a student, I don't understand, and this could be simply a consequence of the translation. I have translation I have of the five books that make up the Vishnu Purana. Up until <clears throat> book five of the Purana, Krishna is not mentioned as anything or anyone relevant. In book five, Krishna is introduced as a manifestation of Vishnu. In English, manifestation means a form, but not the in fact, which means in English that if Krishna cannot be, which means that Krishna cannot be seen as Vishnu in fact. If Krishna is supposed to be Vishnu in fact, then a different word should be used instead of manifestation or incarnation. <laughs> Because again, incarnation, manifestation, any in the English language are one and the same. They both mean an example of, but not the in fact. Also, spirits can't die, as death is restricted to the physical objects, or restrict, restricted to physical objects. So that means that no matter what any and all spirits that have ever existed throughout the annals of time, be those names common or not common, those spirits are all still alive. So we can say Krishna died because Krishna was human, but we cannot say that Vishnu died because Vishnu is a spirit separate from Krishna, same as Allah or Elohim is separate from Jesus. Jesus can die because Jesus is flesh, Allah slash God slash Elohim cannot because they are spirit based. Spirits cannot die. You, death is only subject to this, not the unseen. That's just a fact of reality. You can argue it all you want to, but the text speaks for itself. The next subject. How the temple practices what the Puranas speak on. <clears throat> the way the Puranas treat Krishna in context is as a human. That has a human that has special powers from the heavens. Yet for some reason, when I go to the Hindu temple, I see statues for I see a statue for Krishna. 
I get why the statue for Shiva, Ganesha, Katrakiya, Vishnu, Bodeva, Parvati, and Lakshmi, as well as the other spirits. I get why there are images represent image representations of these spirits. It's because, as was just said earlier, these spirits are just that spirits, unseen realities. What I don't get is why there is a statue for Krishna and Rama when both Krishna and Rama are not literal spirits. They are first flesh, then this goes, then they become a spirit, which will make them going from flesh to now angel. But they were not spirit based. Again, this could, this is an understanding I am getting from my copy of the Vishnu Puranas. My English translation copy of the Puranas. A question I have is a question I, to my Hindu family of today why do we honor Krishna as why do we honor Krishna in the same way that Christians honor Jesus and Muslims honor Muhammad yes this question drives me up the wall it drives me up the wall all the time because it just does not make sense I the way I'm reading things I understand I'm understanding what's going on that okay as as it's been said on earlier shows or earlier other earlier episodes the Christians diss the Muslims Muslims diss Christians both sides are doing the same thing both sides are claiming that we're focusing on the most high when uh, reality is the Muslims are talking are in practice the Muslims are honoring Muhammad as though Muhammad is Allah the Christians are honoring Jesus as though Jesus is God Neither book is saying any of this at all. It's just the humans are doing this because possibly they don't have a lot of actual faith that the unseen really is doing things. Just an idea I have. Anyway. Um, when I see the Hindu family focusing on Krishna over Vishnu, as a fellow student, I ask, do my peers have that little again? As I said earlier, do do people have that little faith in in the actual spirits? Are all are we all so messed up in the head that we can't accept and be at peace with the reality of spirit of we can't be at peace with the reality of Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma as they are? That we need a physical representation. We need Krishna more than we need Vishnu. Just a question. Finally, some th other things I thought of. I forgot to mention. Also, I have a problem with the way Vishnu, with the way the Vishnu Purana paints Brahma. If all three spirits are holy, and holy means pure, pious, or Aryan or upright, why are pious spirits doing less than pious acts, like tricking humans, and saying that they are not there, that they are. Uh, the Purana suggested that uh, spirits are not powerful. I just something just came to me. I'm wondering if when the when it's writing the language says trick. I'm wondering if the word that's meant is test. If so, bad translation, really bad translation. Anyway, the reason I see Vishnu as Allah is because, as was said in the beginning of the Hindu Islam link link series. Both Vishnu and Allah, as well as Elohim, all have the same description. That being a that being a shapeless reality that is neither male nor female, neither and going too fast. Neither Shiva nor Brahma have any description, which is why I don't see either of them as chief executive officer. Excuse me, neither of them has the description of uh, the Most High. They have descriptions that match agents or angels of the Most High, but they don't have the description that would match the literal creator of all things. If we're doing a hierarchy, you have king, then you have the servants under the king. 
neither Shiva nor Brahma is described in a king fashion. That's why I cannot see them as, again, the chief executive officer or the CEO. The reason I say angel instead of Lord is because, again, as I stated, as was stated in the Hindu Link series, in English, Lord means king, i.e. landlord. So, if we flip the word Lord into Sanskrit, you wouldn't get Lord. You would get Raja. Yet, for some reason, no translator has ever written Raja Shiva, Raja Vishnu, or Raja Brahma, etc., I hope, I do hope that, I do hope that I've given all of us, my spiritual family, something to feed on and something to make punja over. Inshallah, we'll go further into this next sub on next week. Anyway, as always, subscribe, like, spread the word. If, if you want to be heard by me, either drop a line down there or, as usual, with that said, keep your hater, info, keep your hater rate on full blast. Speak it to your future. Namaste.